Remain seated, please. Permanecer sentados, por favor. Hey, passengers. It's Dan from the Grand Circle Tour podcast. I just wanted to let you know that this episode is being brought to you by Dream Creators Travel. Our good friends Jennifer G. and Julissa are two of the most knowledgeable people I know when it comes to booking trips to Walt Disney World. Follow them for more Disney tips and tricks on their Facebook group called Busy Moms Planning Disney. Our listeners will not only receive the best booking incentives available, but you will also qualify for a very special promotion. If you book a Disney or Universal package, including room and tickets for three nights or more, they're going to go ahead and give you a free $25 Disney gift card. Be sure to let them know your favorite tour guides at the Grand Circle Tour podcast sent you so that you ensure you receive your free gift. Visit the Dream Creators Travel website today at dreamcreatorstravel.com and remember their slogan, if you can dream it, we can create it. Squish it like a bug. Oh, sorry. No, I was hoping you would do something like that. I, I, I regret not turning it on a few seconds earlier. When Josh was here? No, I don't want to get us kicked off the air. All I know is I'm definitely the uncle to that kid. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys, you, you know how excited I am for the Corella movie coming out? Yes. Um, I had to schedule surgery this week and I scheduled it for the exact same day the movie comes out. So I'm going to pre-order it on Disney Plus because I'm going to be so loaded that day. I was it, just going to say. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter if it's a good yeah, that, movie. That, that, or a, would, that would probably be the best movie to watch. I was going to say, it doesn't matter if it's a good movie or a bad movie. It's going to be a great movie. <laughs> That's true. As I drool. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Doing good. good. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. It's blue skies and sunshine. You know, I like that we're. This is becoming a thing. I like that you guys. Yeah. Said we should do this in a live show. So we're we are going to get there. But you know what made I? So I was listening to your show from last Saturday, and my heart broke a little bit for you, Jay, when you said I never had Saturday morning cartoons. I was like, oh, it's so sad. Goodness. But now it all makes sense. And right when you said, I never, I'm like, the light bulb. Aha, that's why he's so into it now. I'm such a big kid because I had a very um, Charles Dickens workhouse childhood. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Race day. So, George, what did you want to talk about first? Oh, wait, hold on. So that we we can stay on track. Hey, Siri, set a timer for 20 minutes. <laughs> okay. We're good to go? Good to go. <laughs> All right. Uh, the first thing that I just have to ask, just because I was I was bummed because I wanted you uh, a part of uh, this conversation that Holly and I had um, when literally the internet and the media world blew up with the news of uh, Disneyland's proposal for a future expansion with a possible third gate or the expansion of Disneyland and DCA with a attractions, dining, shopping, entertainment plaza and everything. What is your thoughts? Um, I'm actually excited for this. I think this is much smarter than building another hotel in front of the Disneyland yeah. Hotel. I thought it was very telling in their press statement that they said, um, if we don't do this, we're going to have to demolish things people love. Yeah. <sighs> yep. I, I did see that. I think this is a much smarter decision. It's a great use of space. I mean, parking is... I'm so glad I don't, I don't manage parking there anymore because... <laughs> It was a logistical nightmare 20 years ago. I cannot even begin to imagine it now. Now, do you think automatically they're going to have that shopping plaza either, you know, separate, separated from that area or right. integrate with it? 
As far as a third gate, do you think it's going to be a third gate or do you think that they're just going to expand the previous two parks? Because if you actually look at the concept art, it segues into... Right. Well, I've got the concept art up right here and I see two... It, what it looks like to me, um, going from south to north with the DCA ed, uh, it looks like you're going to go into... Uh, an area where there's two show buildings and concept art is just concept art. Right. Nothing's, we have no idea what's actually going to go in there. Um, it looks like we're going to have expansion land um, adjacent to Paradise Pier and expansion land behind Paradise Pier, uh, an expansion of downtown Disney in front of Disneyland Hotel. And then to the right where the monorail is, it looks like we're going to have a walkway out where the pirates or mansion show building is to an all new area. Okay. Now I asked Holly this and she saw the same thing that I did. If you look to the far left where it's by DCA. Yeah. And you see that that water area, does that not look, as I said, it could change at any time, but does that not look like Neverland? That it's supposed, <laughs> like what they're doing over at the- um, it, it does. I just kind of considered it generic. Um, art just because at some point then they're going to have to drop the name California from the park and just be Disney's adventure park. Do you think that would eventually happen? I could see it happening. Yeah. I just, like that. It makes more sense. You can just, just let's get rid of the name California from the park. Well, and it pretty opens much up. already did. Anyways, they got yeah. rid of pretty much every aspect of California theming already. So just finish it off. <laughs> right. It just, it just, you, it, you have so much more room to add things into this park this way. And it's nice to now know, know that Disney is still keeping Disneyland in mind. Right. That in time, Disneyland is going to get a major expansion. Well, I mean, let's be honest. Tomorrowland needs to be demolished and rebuilt. We need an all new state of the art Tomorrowland. Um, Mindy, I'm sorry, but. We could lose uh, Storybook Land Canal Boats all the way to Small World, including the theater, and then everything to the right that's Oasis Space with the Utopia, um, oh, Utopia. The, the motorboat crews, the monorail tracks in the back. We could have a brand new Fantasyland Yeah, there's expansion. so much area over there that yeah. is really not being utilized at I all. I mean, when I see an overhead aerial view of Disneyland, um, I see about 40% of real estate that could go and be replaced with something all new. Mm -hmm. Now, um, when you do look at that area of what it's going to become and it's intertwined with the hotels, the first thing that I thought in my mind was the mixture of how Tokyo Disneyland has theirs with the hotel out in the front that you could look into the park. Right. And also with Universal's ne new concept of with Epic Universe. And I just thought... Okay, I'm not going to lie. When I first looked at the concept art, the first thing I saw was the Paradise Pier Hotel. I went, really? You're going to keep that? <clears throat> yeah. I they're, They can't. That's yeah. got to be completely renovated. It, uh, torn down something. <laughs> yeah, it... it that, that, that whole plot of land, it, it should be demolished and turned into something new. Um, if they want to do more hotel, great, but you could theoretically double your DCA space over there. Um, in, the, in that concept art where the Neverland looking area is, used to be cast parking, and then uh, you go out there like 11 o'clock at night, keys in hand to go home, and you realize what a huge piece of land that is sitting there. Mm-hmm. And I just think that Disney's approach to it is because when everyone saw the concept art for Epic Universe, where it's like yeah. a hotel is actually going to be like right in the theme park and you could literally look out and be amongst it. It's like, I wonder if Disney said, well, we already have the hotels up. Let's just build right. around it. I think this is a great utilization of space. I think this is much smarter than a third gate because... It's not Disney World, guys. It is crowded Orange County. The last thing that area <laughs> needs is even more traffic. We got to get it, Disneyland is so crowded. We got to space these people out. I think this well, is the best way to do it. And George and I were talking the other day about 
the future of California and the capacity limits and guidelines and right. extending the parks is going to increase the capacity because we don't know how long these limits are going to be. Well, on. We, this, we really don't. This and squeezing out annual pass holders because yeah. I think this is by getting rid of the pass holder base, by making it a membership, we get, it's not, you can, yeah. And Be I think good words price, on Saturday. And I think with the, price, <laughs> with the price that it's eventually going to go up to, people are going to look at it and say, right. this is a major price hike. For it what to are be we a, going to do? We want an experience. And I think. And I look at this concept art and I think for $200 a day, A, it better not be jam packed because for me, <laughs> I find it easier to go to Disneyland on a Saturday when it's not crowded as opposed to a Tuesday when it's full of APs. Yeah. Um, 200 bucks. I better get both gates and all this expansion. And you better be open 8 a.m. to midnight so I can wander all day and experience everything for that price point. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And I do yeah. hope that. Still Disney 200. Oh. And I hope that Disneyland utilizes all that land well because, as I mentioned to Holly, they, it's not Walt Disney World where they have what Walt called the blessing of size. You know, they are still very limited. Yeah. And being that they now have the opportunity to do this with the little extra space that they have, I hope Disneyland does it right. I do want to say there's a part of me, that Disney historian part of me, that, that kind of thumbs his nose up at the people who back in 54, 53, called it Walt's Folly. It was never going to work. Even <laughs> Art Linkletter, who, who hosted the opening day special, uh, refused to buy into Disneyland because he didn't think it was going to su succeed, and he was one of Walt's friends. So, all those naysayers, taha tahi. Well, it's funny because, like, you say that, and then my friend and I were talking about all this expansion, and I mean, how much this is going to cost. And it, my friend said, only Disney can be closed for a year, lose five hundred billion dollars, and talk about a multi poly billion dollar expansion. <laughs> After having the worst year in decades, I was like, yeah. <laughs> and I think it's so ironic. Works. I think it's so ironic. I said it on uh, my my YouTube uh, video that it for, <laughs> for Disneyland's 50th, everything went to Walt Disney World. Now with Walt Disney World's 50th, Disneyland gets an expansion announcement. So I think it's going to be... Being a Disneyland fan back in like the 80s and 90s, especially, you kind of looked across the uh, to the other side of America and went, How come they get all the good stuff? <laughs> oh, trust me, Disneyland needed this, it really did. I think this is a great shot. I think this is a really smart decision. This and good timing, out, too, yeah, oh, to yeah. get approvals. Disney, like, yeah, Disney with so much, and, and not to get it into political aspects by what it means but just because of no because i don't want to edit this so i'm just okay. going to slap yeah. this one together so keep politics okay. out of it please yeah oh yeah no i'm just saying like with with the difficulties that disneyland was facing just with everything right that, even uh, like with the city of anaheim that's what i mean well it's, it's like funny even the city of anaheim that they were complaining all the hotels everything surrounding disneyland that they're saying, you know, Disneyland is this, Disneyland's that. Now with the shutdown and them being closed down for so long that this is Disney's golden opportunity to say, we have the space. God knows how they have the money, but I'm glad they do. That they can say, everyone else now is in a sensitive position where it's like they have the upper hand to say, this is what we want to do. It could benefit you. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. just going to say something super salty here. Um, and I, I've never understood this because the city of Anaheim hates Disneyland. It is so resentful of Disneyland. And guys, you would be Santa Anna if it wasn't for Disneyland. Right. And if you aren't, and if you aren't familiar with Santa Anna, mm, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> hate mail goes to George. He's our hate mail correspondent. So yeah, so it really is the best time with with the pandemic, with the shutdown, with I'm sorry, California does not give the love Disneyland deserves. That me personally, I just feel that 
yeah, it, it could not have come at a better time for Disney to utilize a a negative and turn it into a positive. Yeah, I'm. I think we were all underwhelmed by that um, hotel concept art that was just this weird kind of branch out in front of Disneyland Hotel. And the price that it was going to be, I would have never. I can. I can't even really stay at the Grand Californian, and the price for that that new one was. Astronaut. Yeah, that's. Thank goodness that. Dude, got I used I used to manage X. the Grand Californian, and I won't stay there. It's just I'm. We we've talked about this. That I'm sorry. It's just for me, the Disneyland hotels just aren't worth the price. They're not. I stayed at um, California Grand one night, and it's because it was two hundred dollars. I don't know why it was two hundred dollars, but it was on sale yeah. for two hundred dollars. And I was very underwhelmed. Yeah, it was and, nice. And how was but, that shoebox room at the end of a long hallway? Yeah, it was very, I was very unimpressed. Um, and so I just couldn't wait to get back into the parks. I mean, the only nice thing about it was the separate entrance to go into um, DCA. But even then, it was a long wait yeah. to even get into the well, park from the hotel. If you've been to Wilderness Lodge or Animal Kingdom Lodge or any of these open space hotels, you walk into Grand Californian and go, oh, um, I've seen this before. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, may I know. Be, like I said, it's nice, but. Mm. I may be in the minority. I mean, me personally, I would still keep the Disneyland Hotel just for, you know, what it's yeah. for of nostalgia. But the other two. If Disney really wanted to get in good cahoots with the city of Anaheim and the businesses, I personally would get rid of Paradise Pier and the Grand Californian and alleviate even more space. Yeah, well, Grand California is not going anywhere. Um, it, yeah, oh, yeah. It's, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's not, yeah. I'm just, Con, the it, convention it nice money that hotel that, makes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I just think that, you know, to even have more space that they could open up and have some breathing room. And then I would give other businesses... Really surprised to see yeah. Paradise Pier just where it is. I mean, when I saw the concept art, that's where my eye went to first and went, really, guys? You're going to keep that? Yeah. but it's I still mean, the rooms are say, cute. It's still hard but... to say because the, Disney still said everything that shows in that concept art is not the guarantee. It's just... Well, yeah, concept art is just something to put out. It's yeah. just an idea. So who really is to know that Paradise Pier may be going bye-byes. Yeah. It was so funny is there was a time, there was a time in this country, um, way back in the day when the area between the Pan Pacific Hotel, which is now Paradise Pier, and Disneyland Hotel, that that space in between was a dark, scary place you didn't want to go. (laughs) It's funny. So now what about with everything that's going on right now we know that we're getting the expansion you know down the road we are going to be looking forward to it and any new details coming up but what about something that's already in disney california adventure that's practically already built and it's basically sitting there waiting to get opened and i think we all know what we're what that is and that's avengers campus wait what avengers what avengers campus What's that? Even yeah. the name is <laughs> underwhelming. I, I, I text you guys a meme the other day, and it was a picture of the Web Slingers building from Mater's. Oh, and yeah, it said, right. oh, look, they put a Circuit City in a junkyard. What a great theme park. <laughs> I just think the concept to have the Avengers, I get. But it's just one of those things, I guess, like, because it's California Adventure and it, you know, they're titling it a campus, you know, because they're still trying to keep that California thing. But I think, I think that would probably be a good idea if it was just, you know, Dis- the Disney Adventure theme park or what have you. If we to cut the just the name of California, I think that holds a lot of the potential for DCA because of that title. I was just taking a text message. Sorry, can you say that again? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I was trying. I was trying and I, I couldn't. They need to change the name, is what he's saying. Get yeah. rid of the word California and then maybe Avengers Campus will fit. Did better I just with say that? Me. I think that's what the heck, man? Are you stealing from me in the same episode? 
<laughs> no, I was what? agreeing with you that we oh, were okay. talking about Okay, that. I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, no, wait you said we were talking about the experience. See, that's what happens when you don't pay attention and you're texting. <laughs> Get out, yeah. dude. My sister. <laughs> Get anything for my sister. Um, honestly, ever since the... I, I'm just... I, I have been unimpressed and underwhelmed and I find myself not excited for Avengers Campus. Um, it, my feelings for Tower of Terror aside, we've got a rescanned attraction. We've got a food location. Um, we've got a, and yes, I think DCA does need more slow moving dark rides, but not Spider-Man. Um, you guys remember that patent Disney filed a few years ago for a roller coaster where the car was at the end of a long arm that swung oh, from the yeah. track yeah. and it looked like it was going to be a Spider-Man ride where we it was we, like a, we, it was like a, it was like a pendulum type of Yeah, thing. yeah, mm -hmm. and we would swing through the city in, in a Spider-Man POV. That's what I wanted. And I was really excited for that um because that fit Spider-Man. This just nothing's doing it for me to me what this is it's just reskin to spider-man it's just another and i hate to say it another buzz Lightyear. oh yeah space ranger spin toy oh, story uh, mania oh, it's it's a toy story mania it's another ride that it, it, yeah there's gonna be physical sets but you guys it's know how I screen feel about based toy story mania <laughs> <laughs> meh yeah <laughs> I hate it ever since George beat me. We all have the meme to prove it. <laughs> oh, that was hilarious. <sighs> I don't but know. There's there's nothing about this land that's exciting for me. Um, well, and then even the brewery, you know, that's supposed to look like it's going to have this giant sized beer can or whatever it's supposed to be because it's like for Ant Man. Everything is just so disproportion from the other they literally just threw something together i i lived through the 90s the themed restaurants have been done <laughs> i know I, honestly, uh, I don't know it's it's just one of those things where it's, it's so a novelty restaurant going... How, how's the food gonna be i mean am i am i gonna eat there for the novelty or am i gonna eat there because this is actually something i want to enjoy in my mouth well, no. it depends on how the beer is but I don't when I've been going there and they've kind of been opening up the one gate um, so you can see over. I don't know. It just looks like a bunch of just metal to me, like just nothing really interesting. I mean, and granted, the the each of the, the um, Quinchet attraction isn't going to be there for a few years. Um, nothing in this lineup is is really getting to me. Now, yeah. Jay, let me ask you. At the time when this e-ticket attraction with the Quinjet was supposed to open, it was supposed to still be intertwined with uh, Infinity War and Endgame and everything. Right. Now that it's like how many years done, is it going to have any relevance to the fact of, or do well, you think they'll keep the, the attraction the way it is, but maybe change the storyline? Well, in the theme park continuity, um, this is an MC... Oh, thank you, Siri. I'm like... What's happening? Um, it, the the cast of characters, everything that's going to take place in the theme park canon, is an alternate universe from the MCU. So the snap never happened. Cap, Iron Man, Black Widow, they're still alive. Um, so if you ask them about the blip, if you ask them about Thanos, they're not going to have. They're going to have no clue what you're talking about. Gotcha. Maybe it's going to be fantastic. And we just, the and advertising for it is meh. I mean, <laughs> so I, I, maybe, what, yeah. What would excite me is if they let us know that, you know, in this, in this expansion for DCA, um, Hollywood backlot is on the chopping block and it's all going to be Marvel Lamp. And that entire section of the park is going to be nothing but superheroes then I would get excited. Yeah, it's very odd. It's especially right now, it's a very odd area over there yeah. because you have the 
the theater over there and then now you have the wand division like you walk through it and you have mm-hmm. the little set over there and then the stage 17 is now a shopping center that's like empty Oy. and then monsters inc is just kind of there which i love that ride but now it's just kind of awkward they over there i don't know should, well, how- move that over to pixar pier or something because yeah, yeah. you have multiple pixar attractions it's and they're so everywhere. just weird over there now well, holly you just brought up a good point when you said one division because i see a situation where we're gonna have like the galaxy's edge problem where the Mandalorian is popular, Ray and Finn and Kylo Ren are not. Yeah. So, um, how is WandaVision gonna? How are they gonna do WandaVision in a land where it didn't take place? I mean, all the popular stuff, the Loki show, Winter Soldier, everything they're doing now, can that be represented in this continuity for the parks? Mm-hmm. And that's what uh, Holly and I were talking about, even on my YouTube channel, was. We brought up briefly about Galaxy's Edge, and that was a major because for me, I like Galaxy's Edge. I absolutely love Rise of the Resistance. I will try to get an opportunity to go on it every time. But the yeah. land as a whole, it's my least land that I go and visit. I'm going to make a prediction, um, and this is this is our third. This is our third year, so in our eighth year. We'll see if this comes true, but I'm gonna make a prediction right now uh, in 2021. I give it five years before they retheme Galaxy's Edge to a different part of the timeline, because look how popular Mando is. Yeah. Um, all these shows set the Mandoverse, this, this MCU of Star Wars, I can see it being so popular that they change the timeline for Galaxy's Edge. And they're gonna have to. It, you can set it one, just it's one dimensional. It's so yeah. one dimensional. Mm-hmm. It's it's a joke, really. When I went to Galaxy's Edge for the first time, it was so cool to see the Falcon, but it didn't scream Star Wars. It was Adventureland in space. Yeah, yeah. I just you know me. I'm not into Star Wars. I thought it was cool. We were lucky enough to go before it even was open because Simon had to do that that TV show. And I was like, this is cool. And all the other parents were like, oh, my, like losing their minds. And I'm like, this is cool. So for me, who's a Disneyland fan, that's Mm -hmm. all about Disneyland. I was really actually sad that they used this huge area for this barren, cold, land with two rides you Honestly, know like i was like they could have did a whole entire well, lion king area or a whole beauty well, and the well, beast or well, you know like i don't something really disney well do you well, know what that's where they actually could have put the neverland section the tangled mm-hmm. section yeah. the frozen section yeah. they could have had a whole uh, a beauty and the like beast with, section a beauty and yeah. the beast section yeah. don't forget yeah, that yeah, yeah where they could have, Disneyland could have had their own new fantasy land of how Walt Disney World. Did. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I think as the years roll by, the opening of Galaxy's Edge is going to be looked at as a bit of a failure because you had the staged opening, which really bit at the butt. Yeah, they Ooh, spent yeah, that was a billion amazing. dollars on these two identical lands. So if you go to Disneyland and Disney World in the same year, you can skip one of them. Yeah. Yeah. I know. It's kind of like how when you walk walk by Mission Space and you're like, it's dead to me. I kind of feel that way too. Like we usually, we weren't even really going into that area. Yeah, yeah. we were writing Smugglers wrong. And yes, Rise of Resistance is amazing. Like, oh my gosh. It, but yeah, It's amazing, like, but like the one in Florida is can only handle like 1,400 people an hour right now because yeah. they can't get it to work right. I know. And then when we just wrote it a few weeks ago, they cut out half the ride because it wasn't working so they were just putting people on like you missed the whole part where they take you prisoner and you missed the whole storyline they just yeah. basically put us on the end part of it they, they spent a billion dollars on these two identical lands and the insider info the funny part to me is it moves the needle in attendance 0.0 percent at disneyland 0.02 actually went negative at Walt disney world yeah 
it did not bring people in. So the question is, is yeah. Avengers Campus going to be suffering the same fate that Galaxy's Edge is? I think so. I think we may be looking at another kind of missed opening. And these rushes to beat Potter, they they're seem to be tripping. Well, they're doing stuff that's not Disneyland. Right. Like it's well, stuff like, they but acquired. Like with, but that's just like with Pandora. I love Pandora and it fits in with Animal Kingdom. If you were to put Pandora in Disneyland, I'm sorry, it it's it doesn't fit well. Right. No. You could have easily put uh DCA uh Galaxy's Edge in place of Cars Land and it would have fit. I used yeah. to have that room back there. But don't touch Cars Land. No, uh, what I was just going to say, actually, <laughs> but but here's the thing. I got more excited seeing Cars Land for the first time in person than I did Galaxy's Edge. I did, too. Oh, yeah. Cars when Land I walked into perfect. Cars Land, it made me feel like a kid again. The scale, everything about it. And I had, hadn't even seen Cars when I went to Cars Land. Right. I watched the movie after I did the ride. That's what I'm saying. That Disney, the warm, fuzzy, yeah. kid, cute fun friendly and then you have galaxy's edge that's like sand like brown cold can't even read the writing i don't yeah. know so basically, I mean, okay. so basically wait, wait wait what holly just described is that when you walk further back of disneyland she just described the inside of a porta potty <laughs> okay i wouldn't say that but i did say on the universal show with dan that part of the, my issue with galaxy's edge is it is set in a time and location in the Skywalker story that I don't give a duty poople about. A bleep. <laughs> duty poople. <laughs> a duty poople. A duty poople. I tried so hard not to swear since I've become an uncle. Duty poople. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> so funny. Well, Jay, and I have, I know we're pressing for time, but I have a question for you. Going back to Avengers Campus with Spider-Man. Disney is now playing with the fire of another existing Spider-Man attraction with their rival of Universal. And, and you that, know that ride has been very popular since it came out in the year, what was it, 2000? That ride's not just popular, it's considered by some one of the best dark rides ever. So when now when you, the expectations are so great that when they say, oh, Disney's now doing a Spider-Man attraction, I think they would have blown Universal out had they would have done the pendulum type right? of Right, because between the two, the one at Universal looks cooler. Yeah. It's like, okay, you're giving us like, and even the title of it, Web Slinger, it's like, <laughs> wow, yeah, let's go to Web Slinger. You know, let's- You remember all those videos when the Wii first came out of people breaking their windows, their TVs, hitting people in the faces? <laughs> I can't imagine how bad it's how how wacky it's gonna get with people hitting each other, going trying to be like the perfect spider. Pew pew. And just imagine if you're mad at somebody in your party, that's the perfect excuse Boom. for some violence. Oh oh, sorry. Oh, great. Oh. There's my kids. I can already hear it. <laughs> he got me in the eye with his web. See, and I'm an instigator. I'd be the back row going. Hit him, Jenny. Hit him. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, we lost George. He's on the phone. I know. She's on he's on the phone again. Is this what happens She's on bad. Saturday morning? I guess. I mean, when we take this live, you're gonna have to get a secretary, dude. <laughs> you know what? Josh is gonna be your PA on Saturdays when we do this. Right. Josh. Comes in when he's like, one. Here, he's like, here's your coffee, just like you like it, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <sighs> Too funny. Couldn't have kids. I'd be like, go make daddy the perfect martini. I taught you how. <laughs> well, should we just wrap up without George? <laughs> yep. So sad. Too bad. We're, we're saying bye for George, everyone, because he's on the phone. Um, well, thanks for joining us for another Coffee Talk. We're uh, going to see you next Saturday. I have no idea what we're going to talk about, but... Uh, these I are... know that today didn't go as planned either, but... I, I, I like it, it when they don't go as planned. I like oh, it yeah, when we kind of go... I, well, we kind of have a paragraph is what we start. We have an outline of a paragraph, and we just kind of write a novel. Mm -hmm. And I like that. Yeah. 
We do, that's for sure. I like that it feels like, I want the audience to feel like they're at Starbucks with us on Saturday, catching up and having coffee. Right. Sorry, I'm back. Are you are you done? Are you done with your phone yes. call? Yes. yes. Can your you third not be phone rude? Call? Your Can you, third phone call of you this morning? You were so rude to your audience. You <laughs> owe these listeners an apology. <laughs> All right, Hashtag Pat. George ruined your experience. I'm expecting that Josh is your secretary next Saturday. Yeah, probably. I, See, as I said, I end up ruining something. So when, when Dan has his April full show of our stories, I told him that it's going to be probably the whole show is going to be all my stories. Oh, dude, I'm <laughs> so looking forward. I'm on that one. I can't wait. Wait, what is this about? An April Fool's? It's tomorrow's episode. Did I... Oh, that sounds fun. Okay, I got to go. Me too. I got to get these kids ready. Hey, guys, thanks for listening along with us. Um, we'll be back next Saturday. Who knows what we'll talk about, but we'll have just as – we'll probably have more fun next week. <laughs> We're going to add make our coffee Irish next week. That's when we do our Golden Girls show. <laughs> Woohoo! I Holly, get that. to your tea party. <laughs> Ken, take us away. <laughs> If you would like to keep the adventure going after the show, be sure to like our Facebook friends page, Grand Circle Tours Magical Ticket Holders. While you're on Facebook, like our group page, Grand Circle Tours. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, Grand Circle Tours Podcast, as well as on Instagram, GCT Podcast, and our YouTube channel, Grand Circle Tour. If you would like to email us, drop us a line at gctpodcast at gmail.com. T-shirts and other fun merchandise can be found at tpublic.com. Simply search Grand Circle Tour Podcast. If you enjoyed your adventure, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Only one rule, make it good. All logos, sounds, songs, and music that are made by and for Disney and its affiliates are the full ownership of the Disney Corporation and are not, nor are they intended to be, the ownership of the Grand Circle Tour podcast. Thank you for riding with us, and welcome home.